So let's start Freud's theory of personality in detail. There are different stages, the five stages. The first one being the oral stage. The oral stage occupies the first 12 to 18 months of life and centers on the mouth, lips and tongue. It is manifested by chewing, biting and sucking. Now if you look into any child who is like one year old, um, you buy a toy to that child, immediate reaction would be he would bring the toy over to the mouth and start chewing. So this is the way that he express. The objective is to establish a comfortable expression or gratification of oral needs without excessive conflict. It helps establish a trusting dependence on nursing. Excessive oral gratification or deprivation can contribute to pathological traits such as pessimism, narcissism, excessive optimism and demandingness. Now what happens? During that time, the child is suckling all the time. He needs milk, the mother nurses. Now what he says that, what Sigmund Freud states that, the excessive oral gratification or deprivation can contribute to such things like pessimism, narcissism, excessive optimism and demandingness. Next stage is called the anal stage. Now anal stage starts from 18 to 36 months of age, involves bowel function and control. Now what that means, from the until the age of 18, that means one and a half years old, the bowel movements, um, that is not in control of the child. The body does it automatically. Now that's why we wear them diapers all the time. Now the, the child is not in control over his bowel movements. Now from that 18 to 36 months of age, the body tries to find an equilibrium. So the child always knows the, um, when he needs, when the bowel movements happen. Now during that time, there are several indicators that, that the child would give to the parents. For example, making faces or crying excessively. These are the, these are the clues that are being given by the child to the parents. This is essentially a period of striving for independence and separation from dependence and control by the parents. Successful resolution leads to development of a capacity for independence and personal initiative without guilt, a capacity for self-determining behavior without a sense of shame or self-doubt. Now during this time, we have a habit of shaming the child if he pees in public. Now that should be avoided. I mean it should be controlled. I'm not saying that it should be curbed all the time. These kind of shameful things cannot be criticized in public because once that happens the child would try to control and it might lead to damaging situations inside the body so it's better that you give some kind of independence to the child the phallic stage the phallic stage starts sometime during the third year of life and goes on till the fifth year from year three to the year five this stage is characterized by primary focus on sexual interest stimulation and excitement in the genital area. Now during this time, as far as the human being is concerned, what happens? From third year to fifth year, he would try to understand, he or she would try to understand the difference that I'm a boy or I'm a girl. That kind of difference will start during the time from third year to the fifth year. This focus lays on the foundation of gender identity. The patterns of identification that emerge from the phallic phase are the primary determinants of the development of the human character. Now when this phase, or during this time, this is where the development of human character evolves. Now the next phase is called the latency phase. In the latency phase is a phase relative of relative inactivity starting from age 5 or 6 and going on till the age of 11 to 13 years. Now during that time, from the age of 5 or 6 and goes on until 13 years, that means 7 years, during that time, this phase is having a relative inactivity. Um, if you take about, think about the oral or the anal phase, there is not much activity happening during this time. This is further integration of sex role identity and this is the phase where there is a broadening of contacts with sig other significant figures outside the family. So for example, during this time, the child is sent to school 
I mean, we all know that during the age between five or six, we send kids to school. He starts his uh, basic schooling. And during that time, the child meets teachers. That means he meets, he or she meets other people like teachers, coaches, etc. Next phase is called genital phase. The genital or adolescent phase extends from the onset of puberty at around 11 to 13 years and continues to young adulthood. That means 20, 24 years. The psychological maturation of systems of sexual functioning and associated hormonal system leads to an intensification of drives and impulses. Now, we all know that whenever a child becomes a teenager, we all get this kind of uh, comments from our parents that you, since you being the teenager, you are very hard to control. Now, that's because it, there's an intensification of drives and impulses. Now, the adolescent time, they think that they control the world. They can turn the world upside down. Now they are in a process, they are in the learning process, but still they haven't learned completely. Now because of that, um, the half learning is always bad. So this is that phase where they are half learned. And this person, the person reaches a satisfying capacity for self-realization and meaningful participation in the areas of work and love, fulfilling one's adult roles and duties. During this time, teenagers have the urge to be an adult. They just want to grow immediately. They want independence, total independence. This is that phase, the final phase.